Gentlemen, uh, another tech news stuff and whatnot. My last one didn't get that many views, but I want to carry on doing it because I like talking about stuff like this. Uh, hopefully, it'll get a few more views this time. This time, we are going to be talking about what well, I'm on here, the uh, the Razor Edge. Uh, as you can see uh, from below, it's basically a a gaming tablet. Uh, now. To me, I don't see the point in this really. It's gaming laptops don't go down that well for one particular reason. They're shit hard to upgrade when you want to upgrade them. Apart from literally just going out and buying a new one. Unlike desktops where you can just buy parts for it. Not so much with laptops and not so much with this thing. But on the other hand it means technology is advancing quite a lot that they can fit in a device like this something that is able to play up to date PC games probably not at max settings well definitely not at max, max settings but it's a thing for the future I mean come on five years down the line who's to say we're not going to have something this small that can do max settings at 1080 or even 4k uh, even when that, when that comes up about properly. Wow. Um, this thing runs Windows 8 straight from the box, so it is literally a PC. Uh, it doesn't run Android or anything like that, so it's literally a PC in tablet form. There's two versions of it. There's the i5 version and the i7 version. Now, to be honest, I don't see why you would want the i7 version because an i5 is perfectly fine for gaming and you're not going to be doing video editing on this thing. For the simple fact that it's probably just not going to... It's probably not going to be powerful enough to do that kind of thing on it. The main point I can see with this is it's going to be aimed towards college students, university students who can't afford to buy a a, desk, a, a decent desktop uh, and a, a games console and a laptop to do their work on and stuff like that and take to college with them, whereas this thing will do everything. Now, price range on this thing is quite substantial. I mean, I pay for for my desktop, I paid, well I'm still paying anyway, I paid eighteen hundred pound for it, uh, which is not the best in the world. Don't get me wrong, by any by any stretch of the imagination, but it can run all the latest games really in on max settings at ten eighty p, and I can get a steady seventy five frames per second. Some of the older games, like Battlefield Three, I can, at max settings at ten eighty, I can get about one hundred and twenty frames a second. But bearing in mind that my graphics card is. Uh, it's a it's a 670, but it is factory overclocked. It's the Zotac version of it. It's it's overclocked to to the to the bollocks. To be honest with you, that's why I get so so much high frames from it. And to be honest, if I had an i7 rather than an i5, I would probably get a few extra out of it. Not probably not enough to warrant me spending the extra money to get from getting an i7 from an i5. But whatever floats your boat. The one downfall I can see with this thing is, like I said before, the upgrade parts of it. I mean, there's games that come out now, probably not even six months apart, that, that the graphic fidelity changes substantially. And you, you, you buy this at the beginning of the year, six months down the line, you're going to realise, oh shit, I can't actually play this game on it. I'm not a massive fan of Razer myself. Main reason being is because, where is it? Here, when I bought this, this is the Razer Onza Tournament Edition uh, Battlefield 3 Xbox slash Windows gamepad. It basically fell apart, <laughs> to, to say the least. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but just inside there, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, to be fair. Just inside there, I don't think you can. Uh, anyway, the the analog stick, which uh, is this one up here, the the rubber has come off it completely. This one's got a few indents on it. It just feels shoddy to me. It doesn't feel like it was built properly. 
Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to return this because I found my receipt the other day. The thing is with this, it's not just a gaming platform. It, it You can buy... You can actually buy cases. They, I say cases. You can you can buy like a keyboard clip-on case that turns it into sort of like so that's the monitor and you have the keyboard underneath. Basically, it turns it into a laptop. Which, to be fair, this is why I said before it'll be good for college, university students, and stuff like that that can't afford to buy everything at once. They've got one thing that does everything. You can buy an extended life battery pack on it, which good for if you're going on a plane or something like that if you're going on flights yeah I can understand by that the one thing I don't understand with it is you can also get a a controller case for it basically that's got two controllers on either side so it would be on either side of where am I either side of one ah, I forgot to say one here and one on this side of it it basically goes on the on the very edges of it they're like Wii motes, basically, that attach the side of it, that turn it into, uh, I suppose, a handheld. But from what I've read and what I've heard, it's extremely uncomfortable because it makes it extremely heavy. Now, I'm not sure whether you can attach more than one of these peripherals to it or not, which would be, I mean, if, if you can, then uh, if you could attach, the say, the, the controller and the extended battery life pack on it, then that would be fantastic because obviously longer gaming periods for you if you're on a long-haul flight or something like that. Because I can't imagine this thing running a game at, at the maximum settings that it can do, not the maximum settings of the game, but the maximum settings that it can do, is going to last, say, a flight from the UK to Australia or something like that because I just can't see it lasting that long. In fact, I'm pretty damn sure that it won't last that long, the battery life on it. To me, it just seems a bit gimmicky, to be honest. It seems that if you've got enough money to waste on this, then chances are you've got a pretty damn decent gaming PC already. So what's the point in buying one of these? Uh, unless, as I said before, you are a university student or a college student who can't afford to buy one of each and you just want a mediocre thing to do everything at once. Uh, the price range on this thing is not is not cheap and um, the there's, there's, so there's two versions there's the i5 and the i7 version the i5 version I believe is about f between 550 and 600 pounds it, the price rates might change by the time it comes out but it's about it's about a thousand dollars for for the i5 version the i7 version I can imagine will be substantially more probably about thirteen fourteen hundred dollars so around the 750 mark I should imagine it's not it's not cheap but having said that it is cheaper than building a quality desktop that's going to last you a year or two I think this is the PC's way of trying to get back some of the customers fra that have gone over to primarily just playing console games I mean con console hardware as we know is getting extremely old at the moment and there isn't any word or anything on anybody releasing next gen at the moment I mean hopefully at E3 this year there might be Major Nelson did say something on I believe it was Twitter that they've got a big announcement for E3 this year uh, and then they had a countdown to E3 so I'm assuming that will be the new Xbox and for those of you out there who believe it will be called the Xbox 720 I think you will be wrong one reason for that why call a console the Xbox 720 I know it's double 360 and all that crap but 720 is also your basic uh, rendering rate of the consoles at the minute, the resolution rate of the consoles at the minute. So if Xbox, if Microsoft are going to bring out another Xbox that only has a 720p resolution, I would be very disappointed. My theory is that it will be called the Xbox 1080. I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong. Chances are it probably won't be called any of those. It'll be called something absolutely ridiculous. 
like the Xbox Zeus or something like that because it'll be the god of thunder and shit that's not Zeus is it that's Thor actually no two different cultures there two different <laughs> one was Greek and one was one was what one was Egyptian or what ah oh, fuck it I don't know fuck fuck history no but I, I really I, I won't be picking one of these up oh I will be I probably will be picking up the Nvidia Shield to be honest. It, it seems a much better buy for me. I mean, I've got a decent PC so I can run my my PC games on the Shield if I want to. If I want to lay in bed and carry on gaming, I can do that. This thing just seems a little bit too big, a little a little bit too how do I say? It it seems like it'll be awkward to use as a console with as a handheld console with them controllers on the edge. But having said that, I don't see why they've released that console, that uh, controller port, because with it running Windows, you could quite easily plug one of these things in and use one of these instead of using the handheld controllers on the side. Which, let's be fair, if it comes with a kickstand on it, you could kickstand it up, bang your controller in, game away. Which. Probably, I mean, because considering the price range of that controller unit, I think is about two hundred and fifty dollars, which is bloody expensive considering you can pick up an Xbox, a wired Xbox controller for about about I think about sixty dollars, aren't they? Something like that, or about about thirty pound, about forty pound. But I mean, it, 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 we are going a step in the right direction. I think things are getting smaller. But I love my desktops and. I wouldn't swap a desktop for a tablet or even a gaming laptop because it just seems pointless. There's no easy way to upgrade them. They get outdated extremely quick, even more so than desktops. Now, I know desktops outdate really, really fast, but laptops, and I can imagine this tablet is going to outdate pretty darn quickly. Um, so, I don't know what I'm going to talk about next episode. Um people were asking me to talk about the steam box and stuff like that on some forums but I uh, I don't think I'm going to talk about that to be honest I mean it, it, it just doesn't seem like an interesting topic to me it, it's for those of you who don't know what it is the steam box is really just a name there, there is no steam box there is no one item called a steam box it's basically a microcomputer about the same size as a large man's hand it could fit in a large man's hand that comes preloaded with Linux and Steam. One bad thing about that, a lot of AAA titles that are on Steam do not support Linux. So how that's going to work, I have no idea. Whether they're going to do something or start making games that do support Linux, I don't know. But considering that there aren't a lot of PC titles out there at the moment that support Mac and how, how popular is Mac, then I can't see there's going to be a lot of AAA uh, developers jumping on board for making their titles for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I really, I really don't see them putting all their time and effort into doing that. But I think the Steam Box will uh, will crash and burn. To be honest with you, I mean, who, if if you've got enough money to buy a Steam Box, you're going to have a decent gaming PC. What is the point in the Steam Box? You can't just take it around with you and play it wherever you want to play it because you're going to need a monitor for it. And you're not going to take your 22-inch monitor around with you, are you, as well, to play it. For the starters, you'll have nowhere to plug it in. And the uh, and secondly, people will think you're a right douche. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, if you want me to talk about anything else, if you've if you've come across anything that you'd like me to have a look at and maybe have a bit of a rant on, then uh, leave a comment in the in the comment section below. And if you've liked this video, give it a give it a like, and a subscribe wouldn't go amiss either. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.